Daniel chapter 3 verse 16 says this, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this manner. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from uh, your majesty's hand. But even if he doesn't, we just want you to know, your majesty. I love it, I love it. They're, they're so respectfully gangster, you know what I'm saying? Hey, we just want you to know, sir, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. And he commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie them up. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and, and, and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing fire. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three that were tied up and thrown into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire. <laughs> and not, not just walking around, but they are unbound, unharmed, and the fourth one, he looks like a son of the gods. Somebody ought to clap for the reading of God's word. That's the best thing that you're going to receive tonight. Three kids, one king, one fire, one God. The title of my message tonight is You Look Like hell. <laughs> Come on, look at the ugliest person in your row right now. Go on, go on, and say, you look like hell right now. Come on, find him, find him, find him. I, I, I got a question, I got a question. Um, anybody ever woken up late um, for something and, and Maybe you missed your alarm or maybe you slept in a little bit too late. And, and you're so late that you just got to throw anything on. Like you're just reaching for the closest shirt, the closest pants next to you. And, and, and like, like you barely had enough time to brush your teeth and get out the door. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe you, you, you found like a little bit of deodorant or, or, or some perfume that you tried to just just throw on and like you you didn't even have time to iron your shirt you're just hoping that the holy spirit's going to take care of the wrinkles throughout the day you know what i'm saying you, you ever been you ever been so late to something before that that you put on you put on the same clothes that you wore the night before <laughs> anybody ever done that anybody you ever seen somebody do like you were hanging out with them the day before and then you look at them and you're like hey weren't you wearing that yesterday <laughs> like i don't know about you but that's like, like, I don't like, I don't like wearing the same clothes like back to back, let alone just ever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just, I just don't like wearing the same outfit ever, right? If, if I had enough money um, and if I was famous enough, I would just like buy a new outfit every single day. How many of you would do that if that was you? Okay, now, now how many of you, you currently are wearing the clothes that you wore Yesterday, raise your hand. Come on, be honest, be honest. Come on, I like the honesty. I, I, love, I love it because it's all dudes. It's all dudes. It's only dudes. <laughs> a whole bunch of dudes' hands raised. I, I, I love that. You see, you show up to work late, and, and there's this noticeable, it, it's noticeable. There's this noticeable lack of preparation and presentation that you put in before arriving. I think Coach Prime, he says it the best. He says, look good, feel good. Feel good, play good. Play good, get paid good. Okay. I, I, I love that. that. That's kind of his, his mantra. But, but, but have you ever experienced the opposite effect? Um, um, look bad, 
feel bad. <laughs> feel bad, play bad, <laughs> and then play bad, broke. <laughs> you know, you know. See, the trouble that we have with our eyes is that our eyes are most often the leader of our lives. And what we see is oftentimes what we get. What we see is often what we experience. What we see is often what we believe. What we see is what our hearts, our minds, and our lives are tied to. But if you want to be the type of follower of Jesus that God desires for each and every single one of us to be, then you actually have to learn how to have really bad vision. <laughs> really bad vision. How many of you have bad vision, like in, in the natural eyes, like right now, like your four eyes, like you got glasses on, you got contacts, like I, I, maybe you don't know this, but, but I am actually blind, like, like literally blind without my contacts or my glasses. I, I have them. I haven't gotten LASIK eye surgery yet or any of the new cool things that, that you can do to your eyes because I'm scared. Um, and and, 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 and any time that I don't have uh, my corrective lenses, everything becomes blurry. But, but there are these corrective lenses that I can wear that will bring the corrective sight that I need to see the things that I cannot see. And I, I came on an assignment today to help somebody with bad vision. <laughs> Actually, no, I came to help somebody today who has too good a vision. <laughs> who sees a little bit too much who sees and believes everything that they see. You see, the Bible says that faith comes by sight. No, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. A lot of us, though, think that our faith comes by what we see, and we get too good with our eyes. And the truth of the room today is that maybe... You don't want to admit it, but it's the truth. There's a lot of us in the room that look like hell. And, and, and the reason for that is because all you've seen is the hell that you're going through. All, all, you, all you've seen is the hell that you're walking through. And because of what you have seen and because of the hell that you're looking at, the hell has affected every area of your life. It's the reason that you feel like hell. It's the reason that you play like hell. It's the reason that you live like hell. And I, I want to I help somebody. I want to speak to the hell in your life, the attitude in your life, the wrong spirit in your life, the pouting and the whining and the suffering in your life, hear me today, that, that what you are going through may be hard, it may be difficult, but don't you dare discredit and dishonor God by thinking that because it's too hard for you, it must be too hard for God. Listen, 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 listen. I know that what you are going through might be big in your eyes, but your eyes are not God's eyes. And God sees problems not as big problems, but God sees problems as big platforms for his glory to rest on so that you can realize that he is God and you are not. A lot of times we look at big problems and automatically we forget God's big plans. We see big problems and we automatically forget that this may be too big for me, but I serve a God who is bigger than any giant. 
He's bigger than any mountain. He's bigger than any issue. He's bigger than any cancer. He's bigger than any depression. He's bigger than any fear. He's bigger than any anxiety. He's bigger than any financial crisis. He's bigger than any uncertainty that you can find yourself in. Psalm chapter 113 says, for he rules on high over the nations with a glory. Somebody say glory. With a glory that outshines even the heavens. That is how big God is. That God is not just bigger than earth, but God is even bigger than heaven. That outshines the heavens. No one can be compared to God. Enthroned on high. I love this part. It says, he stoops down to look upon the sky and the earth. If God is stooping down to see the skies and the earth, how much more does he have to stoop down to see the problem that is going on in your life? We serve a big God. He's got a big plan. And there is something that he is about to do in a big way. And, and, and hear me, I, I'm, not, I'm not up here trying to belittle the thing that you're walking through. I'm not here trying to belittle the thing that you've been praying on and, and believing for and, and seeking counsel for. I'm sure it's painful. I'm sure it's confusing. I'm, I'm sure that you are walking through it. But I have to stand on God's promises before I stand on my problems. Because the Bible says that his promises are yes and amen. It's the only sure foundation that I have to stand. So if I'm going to stand on anything when I am in the furnace of affliction, you better believe I better stand on the only thing that can sustain me. Because what good is it to worry? What good is it to doubt? What good is it to live a life that is so chaotic and all over the place if God says, hey, in your problems, you can stand on my promise? Psalm chapter 30, verse 5 says, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor, somebody say his favor. Come on, somebody say favor like you want some favor. But his favor, his favor, it lasts a lifetime. Oh, I love this. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. Come on. Is there any joyful people in the room today? Come on. Are there any joyful spirits? Come on. Can somebody give God five seconds of a joyful shout of praise today? <laughs> I'm thankful today that weeping lasts for the night. But what's the promise? The promise is that joy comes in the morning, maybe you've forgotten. It's my job to remind you tonight that joy comes in the morning. Listen, stop wearing the same clothes that you wore yesterday. Stop wearing the same depression that God broke off at rally conference last month. Stop, stop wearing, stop wearing that defeat. Stop wearing that doubt. God says, hey, it's okay to doubt tonight, but tomorrow you're going to walk out a victor. Tomorrow you're going to walk out confident. Tomorrow you're going to be more than an overcome. Come on, can somebody help me preach this thing tonight? Because <laughs> I came in wanting the glory of God. But I don't get the glory of God wearing the same clothes that I wore yesterday. I want the glory of God. I want the miracle of God. I want the blessing of God. I want the favor. I want God himself. But watch this. I don't get to get God if I'm wearing the same clothes that I wore yesterday. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't get it unless I wake up and I realize that there's new joy. That morning can last for the night, but joy. Somebody say, but joy. But joy, it comes in the morning. You can look like hell tonight. But just know when you wake up tomorrow, <laughs> you're about to look like heaven. <laughs> you might look like hell tonight. But just realize that God is giving you a new spirit. That God is giving you a new mind. 
that God is giving you a new anointing on your life that says, hey, mourning can last for the night, but joy, it comes in the morning. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, th this is what they knew. They knew that the fire may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Okay? They had some blind faith. Some faith that had really bad vision. The type of faith that said, I don't know what's going to happen today. But I do know what's coming for me tomorrow. The type of faith that says, I don't know how this thing is going to sift out. But I do know that this thing is going to sift out. <laughs> the type of thing that says, man, I don't know. This storm is crazy. But God didn't tell me that I'm going to the storm. He said that I'm going through the storm. <laughs> Morning can last for the night, but baby, joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. So if I can just get through the night, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 it says, but we all with unveiled faces looking as in a mirror at the glory. Somebody say the glory. glory. Looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. From glory to glory. Just as from the Lord, the Spirit. Anybody thankful today that our lives were designed to go from glory to glory? <laughs> from good to great. <laughs> from blessed to highly favored. <laughs> From better to best. This is what God is meaning. Our lives were designed to have an upward trajectory. To go from glory to glory. See, I know that will preach. <laughs> you ever heard a pastor say, man, oh, God's about to take us from glory to glory and strength to strength. <laughs> I mean, that will preach, man. That will get the people going. From glory to glory. But also, from strength to strength. From glory to glory and from strength to strength. In other words, God's not just going to make it better, but he's also going to make you stronger. From glory to glory and strength to strength. Is there anybody in the room tonight that maybe you could use some strength tonight? <laughs> There's an area of your life that you're feeling weak. There's an area of your life that you're feeling fatigued. There's an area of your life that you're feeling tired. God wants to impart strength into the room tonight. But, but let, let me ask you this question. For what purpose does God want to give you strength? For what purpose does God want to make you stronger? Anybody know that person in their life who just, they like, they eat, sleep, and breathe the gym? If they could legally change their name to gym, they would. Okay, like, like they, they just, they, they're always in the gym. You see, here, here's one thing that I am for certain of. Not a single person in this room thought of me. Okay? <laughs> and, and, and you know what? I am proud of that. <laughs> like, like, like I, I, I hate the gym, but, but maybe there's somebody in your life that they're like, bro, they, they, they like the gym way too much. They're a gym, gym bro. They're a gym chick. Like, they just, they're always, they eat, sleep, breathe the gym. Here's the reason that I'm proud that not a single one of you thought of me is because it's always the big people that get asked by people who are moving their apartments, their houses, right? Like, like ain't nobody calling me, y'all. Okay, they're thinking of the biggest people. Anybody like you know that person in your mind right now, they're like, yeah, they're just a gym rat. Raise your hand right now. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. Right. Raise your hand if you think you are that person. Like, like you're in the gym 24. You could eat, sleep, and breathe the gym. I'm down. Because I'm not the first person somebody's calling when they got to move. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like when, when you're the only person in your friend group that has a truck. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody, everybody got a truck guy. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody want to go spend $29.99 on a U-Haul truck. <laughs> they got their own truck guy, you know. You got these big guys, you know. It's like these big guys like, oh, you, you, got, you got something big you got to move? Find the biggest dude in the room, right. But those guys, 
They can be irritating sometimes. Here's why. They can be irritating sometimes. Here's why. Because they always get so naggy when you ask them to move something big. Okay? They're like, well, what, what, what do I have to? And like all the dudes that are big, that this is how they talk. They're like, well, why do I got to do that? You know, <laughs> I, don't, uh, 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 uh. I, I only lift weights. I just, uh, no, yeah, 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 Jim, Jim, Jim. I am Jim. I, uh, you know? <laughs> hey, bro, I need you to move this couch. Well, why can't you ask that small person to do it? Why do I always have to do it? <laughs> right? Every big guy that, uh, that works out 24, that's how they talk. It's just like, <laughs> Like, stop crying, okay? You know what I say to them every single time? You know what I say? This is the question I ask them. You're big for what? <laughs> You're big for what? I love, I love finding the biggest person in the room. And I go up to him. I'm like, hey, you're big for what? So that you can take a, a cute Instagram video of yourself. <clears throat> and do a stupid little voiceover with the sound of And God created the human body. And he called it perfect. And it was seamless. This temple is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the video is always black and white. <laughs> it's always black and white. <laughs> Bro, you're big for what? <laughs> for what purpose? <laughs> is behind your bigness, <laughs> okay? For what purpose is behind all of that muscle if you're just gonna complain when I need a big thing moved? <laughs> Some people, they just wanna be big for the sake of being big. <laughs> Maybe a better question is, why do you wanna be big for God? Well, let, me, let me ask you today. Why, why is it that you want to have big faith for God? Is it so that people can look at you and say, wow, he's got big faith. Wow. Wow, look at those. Wow, look at that. Wow, look at that. Look at that prayer life. Wow. Wow. Wow, my gosh. Wow. wow. Oh, my gosh, dude. Look, look how much they're in their word. Wow. 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 Oh, my goodness. Wow. Look, look how they lift their hands and they worship. Wow. What? You're big for what? Are you big for the sake of looking big for God? Or are you big for the sake of saying, God, whatever you have for me to carry, God, I'm going to pick it up. God, I'm going to walk with it. God, I'm going to be strong. I'm not just going to be big, but I'm also going to be strong. Ha! Ah! And you're not going to like what I have to say next, but we got a whole lot of big Christians who are really weak. We got a whole lot of big churches that have no power in them. We got a whole lot of big young adults ministries with people walking into the room saying, God, I'm big. I showed up to church. And God's like, I don't want you to be big. I want you to be strong. I want you to serve. I want you to tithe. I want you to get tied in. I actually want you to be the church and not just go to church. <laughs> Everybody wants the glory. Ain't nobody want the strength. Because the glory makes me look big. <laughs> but what good is it to be big and not strong? So I, 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 I hate it, man. I, I hate it when I see, when I see Christians who have, have been following the Lord and, and walking through the principles and the practices, but they're still dealing with the same issues and the same cycles. And here is the reason why. It's because they've been so consumed by the glory that they've forsaken the strength. They're saying, God, I want to move from glory to glory. God, I want to move from glory to glory. God, I want to move from... But, for, but the second that God puts the weight of glory on them, they crumble because they have no strength. Why does God say, I'm going to move you from strength 
to strength. It's not so that you can put a cute Instagram post out. It's so that you can begin to carry heavier things. It's so that you can begin to understand the attack is not because you are weak. The attack is because God is making you stronger. And he's moving you from strength to strength. You're big for what? You're challenged for what? You're called for what? So that you can walk around saying, I'm called by God. I'm called by God so that I can walk around carrying big things from God. You're anointed for what? You're strong for what? These three Hebrew boys don't bow. And as a result, the fire is turned up seven times hotter. Seven times hotter. And the soldiers, they get stronger. They had soldiers. And then they said, actually, get the strongest soldiers. Listen, your faith is not revealed in the fruit. Your faith is revealed in the furnace. Okay? Everybody thinks, well, I'm going to have great faith when I see the fruit. No, no, no. God says you will actually see your great faith or your puny faith or your wimpy faith when you're actually faced with a furnace that's turned up seven times hotter and soldiers that are seven times stronger that come to attack. Then we'll really know if you have some big faith. Some big faith. Big faith. Big faith. See, see, it's funny because a lot of times we get upset when God weighs us down. But listen to me today. Don't despise strength. Desire, don't desire strength and then get upset when God says to use it. God, make me stronger. God, make me stronger. God, make me stronger. Cool. I need you to go pick up that couch. God, why would you ask me to pick up that couch? God, give me strength. God, give me strength. God, cool. I need you to go move that mountain. (laughs) But God, why do I have to be the one to move the mountain? Aren't you the same guy that just asked me for some strength? Aren't you the same guy that just said, hey, build me up, God, so that I can carry more, and then you get upset when I give you more? Some of you have the appearance of strength, but none of the application of it. And you're complaining about what you're going through instead of using the strength he's given you to walk through the fire that's been turned up seven times hotter and realize that when God blesses you, you will not be burned. If God is giving you the strength to walk into the furnace, then you better walk into the furnace realizing if God blessed me, then you better believe I'm not going to burn in this thing. See, why else would God tell us countless times to be strong, be strong, be strong, get some strength, be strong, be strong, because he knows there's a fight that if you are a wimpy Christian, you will not survive. If you've got some wimpy faith, then you will not survive. Where are the strong people of faith? (laughs) No, no, not, 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 not the pretty people of faith. I'm talking about the strong people of faith. I'm talking about the ones that have been battle tested and are battle ready. I'm talking about the ones that know how to sit in a prayer closet and say, God, I'm not walking out of these doors until I see you do something. I'm talking about the ones that know how to get into the presence of God, not when there's a worship leader or a worship pastor, but know how to break into the room themselves and say, God, I've got some strong faith, and it's not faith that I picked up from another person, but God, it's strength that you've given me, I'm just trying to look for some strong people of faith tonight. Man, some strong people of faith that look at demons and say, demon, you have no control over my life. You have no authority over my life. The type of strong faith that can look at a principality or a strong place and begin to tear it down and not look for somebody else. Uh, The type of faith that can look at a demon possessed person and not get freaked out and say, oh man, I need an exorcist. But realize, wow, the same power that rests in Jesus is in me. The same power that Jesus used to cast out the demoniac. God has given me I'm talking about strong faith. 
talking about strong faith. I, I need some, I need some strong faith. The, the type of faith that says even if he doesn't. I need that even if he doesn't type faith. L let me ask a question to someone in the room who hasn't seen God come through for you yet for the thing that you've been believing for. Will you serve God even if he doesn't? Will you love God even if he doesn't? Will, 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 you, will you still show up to the house of God even if he doesn't heal you, even if he doesn't touch your family, even if he doesn't come through with that lump sum of money that you need, even if he doesn't provide the job that you've been hoping, even if he doesn't save you from the fiery furnace, will you still not bow to the gods of this world because you know, God, if you do nothing else for me, you've already done enough on the cross at Calvary. God, you saved me. You said, that's good enough for me, God, if you do nothing else, even if you don't heal me, even if you don't come through, even if you don't, God, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm st even if you don't, even if you don't. See, 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 this is, th this is something that is so amazing to me that they're like, hey, so I just want to let you know, God is going to save us. However, even if he doesn't, I still believe that he's good. Even if he doesn't, even if he, even if he doesn't, I still believe that there's a plan in my pain. God, God even if you don't, my question for you today is what if he doesn't? What if he doesn't? What if he doesn't heal you? What if he doesn't come through? What if you don't receive the thing that you've been praying for? Will God still get the glory even if he doesn't? See, see you want to know what's amazing to me? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they take a stand against King Nebuchadnezzar, okay? This is a great display of faith. One that I think very few of us in the room would actually follow through with. Here's why. I think that many of us would take the stand of faith that they took. Hey, we're not bowing because we know God is going to save us. And even if he doesn't, we know that God is still good. I think many of us in that room would take that stand. I'm not talking about that stand. I'm actually talking about the stand after. The stand after when King Nebuchadnezzar comes in seven times stronger and he says, okay. You made your bed, now you got to live in it. And he says, hey, turn it up seven times hotter. Get the strongest guards and bind them. This is the point that I think most of us in the room would take. We'll be like, God, um, any time now? Like, God, hey, now, now would actually be the perfect time. God, 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 they're tying me up. I can't move, God. <laughs> God. <laughs> Come on, dude. I talk big right now. Homie, God. God, yo. Yo, the, the soldier just died. Walk into the fire. God. God, where are you, God? God, the other soldier just died. And now we're, we're, we're consumed by the flames, God. A ain't it funny how that works? Not, not the stand that you take to say, yeah, God will do it. But the stand that you take when God, in fact, does nothing. <laughs> And you begin to see people dying around you. And it's only hotter. And it's only sweatier. And it's only messier. And it only leads to more fire. What if he doesn't? What happens when you believe he's going to save you? And it looks like he doesn't. Because they were thrown in the fire. And they were left for dead. And they were looking like hell walking to the furnace. God, will you save us? What if he doesn't? They're engulfed by the fire. They're engulfed by the flames. And what God was supposed to do, he seemingly didn't do. You see, what if the miracle is not that he stopped the fire? What if the miracle was that he was in the fire? 
So see, see what, if, what if the miracle is not that he shut off the flames, but what if the miracle was that he stepped into the flames and, and he began to declare his word? You, you, you know what his, his word says? It says this in Hebrews. It says that he is the all-consuming fire. Did you know that? Did you know that God is the all-consuming fire? The miracle wasn't that he stopped it. The miracle was that he was in it. He was in it. Because the Bible says that they were perplexed when they looked and saw that they only threw three in, but now there was a fourth person in the fire, and this one looked like the son of God's. See, maybe you don't know this about the fourth person, but the fourth person, it wasn't a guard. It wasn't another man. It was actually the son of man. And, and, and it was the son of man that stepped into the furnace. But what the furnace didn't know is that if Jesus is in you, the fire can't consume you. Come on, is there anybody that's thankful today that you've got Jesus in them? And so even though you might see flames around you, the flames will not consume you. You can't burn something that is already on fire. You want to know the reason that I want to be set on fire? It's because the flames of Satan are trying to burn me. But if I'm already on fire with the Son of God, if I'm already on fire with the consuming fire, then there is no demon in hell. There is no Satan. There is no devil. There is no principality. There is no stronghold. There is no generational curse that can burn my life because I'm already burning with the fire of God. Come on, is there anybody in the room that is burning with the fire of God in their life. Give them a shout of praise right now. God, we want to burn for you. It's the all-consuming fire. It's the fire of God that enables the fires of the world to be extinguished in my life. See, what if he doesn't save me from the fire? At least I know he's going to be with me in the fire. You see, God never promised a pretty life. He just promised a present life. The type of life that said, I will be with you. When you make your bed in hell, I will be with you. When, you're, when you don't have it all together, I'll be with you. When you're crying yourself to sleep, I'll be with you. When you were abused and used, I was with you. When you went through that divorce as a kid, I was with you. When you were heartbroken, I was with you. When you went through the fire, I was the fourth man in the fire, and I was with you. I was with you. See, this is why I get excited. That's why I get excited when I go through trials and afflictions in my life. Because it's in those places that I feel the closest to God. It's in those places that I'm not looking for the problems anymore. I'm looking for God. And I'm saying, God, where are you? I know you're in here somewhere. I know I've been distracted. I know there's all these voices. I know it's crowded. But, God, I know you're in here somewhere. And I know you're working behind the scenes. I just got to find you. I just got to find you. I just got to find Because I know that you are with me. I know you're with me. And you're encouraging me. And you're holding me. And you're sustaining me. And you're saving me me. Daniel chapter 3 verse 27 it says, then the high officers and the officials and the governors and advisors, they crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. The fire had not even touched them. Not a hair on their head was singed. And their clothing was not scorched. It's my favorite line right here. They didn't even smell like smoke. Anybody ever been to a bonfire before? Ever been about, you know how hard it is to get the bonfire smell? Not even off your clothes, off your body, in your hair. Like, you could be at a bonfire for five minutes, and then you walk around, and people are like, you must have just came from a bonfire, right? Anytime I'm at a bonfire, I am scrubbing my skin because my skin is like an absorbent for the smell of bonfire. And these people are in a furnace that is seven times hotter than the furnace usually burns. And the Bible says that they didn't even smell like smoke. They didn't even smell like smoke. Let me ask you a question. You ever been around a smelly person before? 
If the person next to you smells real bad, raise your hand right now. Raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. If they smell, come on, they just, they stink. They smell bad. They smell bad. I'm talking like the type of person, they don't even know what Old Spice is. Like they had never heard of it. The type of person, like they don't even know how to spell Colgate or Crest. You know what I'm saying? They never heard of a breath mint before. You know, the, I, I'm talking like the, 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 the type of person that just like everywhere they walk, like you know that person at your job that they just, they just, they're just known as the smelly guy, you know? Everywhere that they walk, they just leave this nastiness, this aroma that follows them everywhere that they go. And they smell bad. How is it that these three Hebrew boys didn't even smell like smoke and they walk out smelling like Chanel perfume? These guys are like, what just happened? Smelly people. My final question that I want to ask you today is what do you smell like? What do you smell like? The word was for you. Put some deodorant on. No, I'm just kidding. I had to, I had to, I had to. That was low hanging fruit. I'm sorry. That was, that was easy. It was, it was too easy. It was too easy. It was too easy. I know him. I love him. Okay. For all of you who are like, oh, this guy's a heretic. <gasps> okay. But, but honestly, what do you smell like? Because the reality is we can smell it. <laughs> what, what do you look like? What do you look like? Because we can see it too. Did you know that there is a space that you can be in the fire but not smell like the fire? There, there is a space where you can be in the fire, but you ain't got to look like the fire. L let me say it like this. You can walk through hell without looking like hell. But too many of us, because we walk through hell, we look just like hell. Because often it's the hell in our lives that begins to lead our lives. And everything that we do smells like hell. Everything that we say smells like hell. Everything that we touch turns to hell. Because we are in the fire and we let everybody and their mama know that we in the fire. Hey, bro, how's your day today? Man, I'm just going through it, man. I'm just, I've been, man, I'm just, I'm, I'm struggling, man. And I'm just walking through this thing. And, man, it's just not getting easier. And, man, my life sucks. And I'm just trying to figure this out. And, man, the devil, he just keeps beating me down. The devil, he just keeps winning. And I don't know where God is. God must have taken a vacation on my life because I'm just going through this thing. And, man, my relationship is a mess. And, and my words are a mess. And my life is a mess. And my mind is a mess. And my job is a mess. And every single friendship that I have, it's a mess. My finances, it's a mess. And we just let everybody and our mama know that we're walking through hell. Listen, I'm not telling you to overlook the reality of what you're walking through. I'm just saying, don't worship what you're only supposed to walk through. And some of us, you're not going to like me for saying this. But we got some hell worshipers in the room. You're like, no, no, not me, not me, not me. I don't worship hell. I don't worship. I don't worship. You know what worship is? Worship is simply fixating your attention on a thing. Anything that you give your most time, attention, energy to, is the thing that you worship. And some of you, whether you like to admit it or not, 
you're worshiping your hell. Because it's the only thing that you can think about. The reason you're tired is because you've been given your hell all of your energy. The reason you're confused is because you think that you're worshiping God, but the devil has you bound worshiping the hell that he's put you through. And you've been worshiping, walking around your life, misleading your life, forgetting the promise of God. What is the promise of God? It's Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. It says, when you go through deep water, I will be with you. It doesn't say, hey, don't worry, you won't go through deep water. No, no, it says, when you go through deep water, because you will go through deep water in this life, I will be with you. When you cross dangerous rivers, God, can I only walk on the path? No. <laughs> God, can I only walk on the sidewalk? No. If you're going to follow me, when you cross dangerous rivers, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire, it will not burn you. And the flames will not destroy you. Maybe you feel like you are in the fire tonight. Here's what I want to remind you. You can smile in the fire. Here's what I want to remind you tonight is that you can actually, believe it or not, you can praise God in the fire. Here's, here's the honest to God truth. You can lift your voice in the fire. You can laugh in the fire. Did you know that? Did you know that just because you feel anxious, just because you're walking around bound by unforgiveness and bitterness, just because you've had some heartbreak in your life, did you know that you don't have to walk around like this? Just because life has been hard, just because you've been dealt some unfair cards, just because you have found yourself in the fire, doesn't mean you got to walk around like. Did you know that there is a place that you can get to in your faith that can say, I'm in the fire anyways. <laughs> I'm not getting out of the fire. I'm bound up in the fire. I'm tied down in the fire. The door is locked for me to escape the fire. So if I'm going to be in the fire, I might as well smile. If I'm going to be in the fire anyways, I might as well lift up my voice. What do I have to lose? I'm already in the fire. So God, I'm already at rock bottom. I can't get any lower than this. But I can lift my praise higher. <laughs> I can't get any lower than this, but I can lift my voice higher. I can't get any lower than this, but I can get my hands higher. I can't get any lower than this, but I can teach my spirit to not be obedient to my flesh. But I can strike my flesh. And say, even though I walk through the fire, I know that there's a God who is with me in the fire. And his word says that I will walk through the fire. But I won't burn in the fire. I will walk through the fire but I won't burn in the fire. Somebody, you need to get that in your soul tonight. You are about to walk through the fire, but you will not burn in the fire, and the flames will not destroy your life. I don't know who's walking through a fire. I just came on an assignment from heaven tonight to let you know that you will not burn. Somebody got to give praise right now. Somebody's got to lift their voice right now. Come on, somebody lift your voice in the middle of your fire.
Somebody's got to get the fire in their heart before they can get through the fire in their life. Stay standing, stay standing, stay standing. Write this down. The fire that is supposed to kill you will not even burn you. The fire that is supposed to kill you will not even burn you. The fire that was meant to kill these three Hebrew boys did not even burn them. It did not even make them smell like smoke. See how? Because you've got God in the fire. This is why Philippians 4, verse 4. This is a man writing while he is in prison. This is a man writing while he is chained up, locked up. This is a man who is writing when he's paying a life sentence. This is a man who is writing when he's on death row. This is a man who is writing when he has no hope. This is a man who is writing when things are not going to work out in his favor. This is a man who is writing that says, God save me, but even if you don't, I will praise you in the middle of the storm. This is a man who is writing, who has nothing good going for him, but he's writing to God. And what does he say in Philippians? chapter 4 he says rejoice in the Lord always somebody shout always somebody shout always like you believe rejoice in the Lord always and again and again and again and again and again and again I say rejoice rejoice and rejoice and rejoice always not sometimes not when it's going good but always the fire, God, I will rejoice. In the lack, God, I will rejoice. In, in, in the disease, God, I will rejoice. In the hardship, God, I will rejoice. In the mess, God, I will rejoice. In the unknown, God, I will rejoice. In the hell that I am walking through, I will rejoice. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil because you are with me. God, 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 I'm gonna walk through my hell, but today I'm not looking like hell no more. God, I'm gonna walk through my situation but I'm not gonna look like my situation anymore. God, I'm gonna carry this cancer, but I'm not de gonna declare this cancer over my life. God, I might be depressed today, but the joy of the Lord will be my strength. God, 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 I will rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Come on, are there any worshipers in the room today that can rejoice, that can rejoice, that can rejoice? that can rejoice and again I say rejoice and again I say rejoice God you will get my joy God you will get my mouth God you will get my hands God you will get my feet I might not have anything else to give you but God I'll pour out my heart to you tonight oh God I'll pour out my heart to you tonight oh God I'll pour out God if you save me cool but even if you don't even if you don't at all times, at all times, at all times, God, at all times, always, 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 oh, in my mountains high, in my valleys low, I will rejoice. God, in my coming, in my going, God, I will rejoice. God, when I'm walking through heaven and when I'm walking through hell, I will rejoice and I'll rejoice again. God, when you send me to the fire and it's cranked up seven times hotter, you better believe that on the way, when everybody else is dying around me, I'm going to give you my praise. Oh my gosh, man, I wish there was somebody who would just know how to rejoice at all times, who we just know how to rejoice at all times, at all times, at all times, at all times. God, 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 your rejoicing will be on my mouth for as long as I live, God. God, I will rejoice and be glad. God, today is the day that you have made, God. I will rejoice and be glad in it. God, better is one day, one day, one day. God, better is one word, one word. God, better is one moment in your presence than a thousand elsewhere. God, I will rejoice. God, I will rejoice. God, I will rejoice. God, 
God, God, I will rejoice at all times, at all times, at all times, in every way, God, I will rejoice, I will rejoice, God, I will rejoice and be glad in it, God, I will rejoice and be glad in it, Holy Spirit, God, I thank you, Lord, I thank you, God, I thank you when you kept me, God, God, I thank you when I was falling, God, I thank you, God, I thank you, God, that you sustained me, that you kept me, God, God, in the palm of your hand, my life was going crazy, God, my life didn't have it all together, I I didn't know how or when or where I was going to take my next step, but you knew every single time. And when I look back on my life, God, God, I thank you for every single time that you pointed a finger. God, every single time that you touched my life. God, every single time that you rearranged some things that should have killed me and should have burned me. But thank God for your word that says I will walk through the fire and I will not be burned. I will walk through the rivers and I will not drown. I will be sent into the deepest parts of the sea but you will be with me I need somebody to help me just rejoice today oh my God 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 God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, if somebody is not going to thank you, then I'll thank you for them, God. I thank you, God, that there are people in this room, God, that their parents thought about aborting them, God, but you changed their minds, God. I thank you that there are some people in there that they should be dead right now, God, but you brought them back to life. God, there are some people that they should be in prison right now, but God, you shut the gates of those prison doors, and you said, no, no, come and follow me. There are some people that should be drug addicted, alcohol addicted, porn addicted, addicted, bound, broken but God you said no no, I'm gonna intervene I'm gonna step in the way so yeah I might be walking through a fire right now but I remember every single fire that you brought me through so God I'll rejoice in those I might not be able to rejoice right now about what I'm going through but I can rejoice about what you did on the cross for me I can rejoice that it was my shame that it was my name that was pinned on that cross God I can rejoice that I was the one that should have been that should have been up there God God I was the one God you did it for me God when you died on that cross God you did it for me you were thinking about me God God and I thank you and I rejoice and I rejoice and I'm glad in it God I'm glad in it. God I will rejoice and I'll rejoice again and again and again and again for saving God I thank you when me and my wife had our miscarriage and we didn't think that, that that this was possible and we didn't think it was God but God you said hey 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 I've got that baby in heaven with me right now and one day you're gonna be re- united but if you would just trust me if you would just trust me if you would God I thank you that you sustained us through one of the hardest seasons of my life God I thank you God God I thank you when I felt the greatest deepest sense of rejection on my life God I thought I was serving you and I thought I was walking with you God and I thought you had a plan for my life but all of a sudden there was something that diverged me from the plan and all I felt was regret all I felt was bitterness all I felt was shame all I felt was rejection and then you brought me in and you said you have not been rejected but you've been accepted you have not been rejected but you've been approved I am keeping you I am sustained I am preparing you for a new future God I will lose my last breath if it means that you're going to get my worship God every breath that I have I give it to you God God I thank you God I thank you God I thank you God, I thank you. God, I thank you. I'm just trying to help somebody. I'm trying to teach somebody how to lose their last breath, not on complaining, not on complaining, not on whining, not on, not on trying to justify, but by giving God your praise. God, if I pass out on this stage, I am going to pass out praising your name in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, oh God, God, I thank you for a father. I thank you for a father who should have died in the streets of Hawaii. God, I thank you for a father who who was never brought up in faith. God, I thank you for a father who through one invitation to church gave his life to Jesus, became a pastor, and now that's my father that I get to call my own. God, I thank you for a father who broke off generational curses so that I didn't have to walk through what he walked through. God, I thank you for the miracle, God, of another day to preach your word. God, I thank you for another day, God, the miracle.
miracle of another day. God, to lift up my voice, to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. God, to shout unto God with the voice of triumph, even while I'm in the fire, even while I don't have it all figured out, even when nothing has changed in my life. God, I will rejoice and be glad. God, I will rejoice and be glad. The devil cannot steal my mind. The devil cannot steal my mouth. The devil cannot steal my outfit and try to make me wear what I wore yesterday. But God, you told me that you're giving me new clothes and you're clothing me in a robe of righteousness. God, that you are clothing me in new hope today. God, that you're restoring every single piece that's been lost from my life. God, I thank you for my brother who has cancer right now. And God, I thank you, Lord, that nothing has changed. And even if nothing changes, God, God, we know that you've got a plan and you've got a purpose. And God, we know that the fire will not burn us and the fire will not kill us. So God, we're going to praise you in advance. God, we're going to praise you like the miracle has already happened. But even if the, do the miracle doesn't happen, God, you're still going to get my praise. You're still going to get my worship because I will rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh my God, oh my God. Some of you, some of you, this is the longest and a long time that you've rejoiced about anything in your life. I'm just trying to create space today. I'm just trying to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit because some of you are still looking like this. Tap your neighbor, tap your neighbor and say, you still look like hell. Tap your other neighbor and say, you still look like hell. I'm just trying to get heaven to break out in the room tonight. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm just, try I'm just trying to fight for somebody in the room that you look like hell and you don't know how to break out of it. Come on, baby. The more you worship, 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 the more you worship. God, I will rejoice. And again, I will rejoice. Oh my God, 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 oh my God, 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 I will rejoice, God, I will rejoice, God, every time I'm insecure, God, every time I'm insecure, God, no longer am I going to look like that insecurity, God, God, but I'm going to recite your word over my life, God, God, that, that I have been made secure, God, based on the cornerstone, the, I stand on the cornerstone, Firm and secure. Firm and secure. God, I thank you for the cornerstone. The one that was tested. The one that was battle ready. The one that didn't break under pressure. That's the stone that I stand on. Even when I feel secure, insecure, God, God, I'm not insecure. And I don't look like insecurity. Because I'm standing on a cornerstone that is firm and secure, God. God, I thank you, God, that you are renewing my mind, Lord. God, you're renewing my mind. You are transforming me, God. God, May we not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind today, God. God, I thank you that you are rewiring us, God. God, you are rewiring our minds, God, not to see what we see, God, but to see what you see, God. God, would you make us blind to the things that we see, God? Would you make us blind to our weaknesses? Would you make us blind to our deficiencies, God? God, would you make us blind to, and God, would you open our eyes, God, just like like you did Paul on that road, Lord. God, I pray that you would open our eyes and we would see clearly. God, I'm asking for clear vision, God. Clear vision, God. Not right vision, God. We don't need right vision. We need clear vision today, Lord. God, we need clear. God, I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice in every single testimony that we saw on that video, God. Every single time you came through. Maybe it didn't happen for me, but I'll rejoice in that miracle because that's proof that God exists. And if God exists there, God exists this here. If God is in that fire, God is in this fire. Oh my God, I wish a fire would break out in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh my God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. We want your glory, God. We want your glory, God. God, would you pour out your glory, God? Would you shine your glory down on us, God? God, would you shine your glory down on us, God? Fill us with faith, God. 
not big faith, God. We want strong faith, God. God, would you give us some strong faith today? God, the type of faith that can move a mountain, God. The type of faith that can heal, God. The type of faith that can prophesy. The type of faith that can speak in other tongues. The type of faith, God, that can give words of wisdom. The type of faith, God. God, would you give us, would you give us, would you give us the fire of God? God, we want the fire of God, the fire, the all-consuming fire, the all-consuming fire. God, would you consume us, God, consume us, consume us, God, like a forest fire that cannot be controlled, God. God, I pray that tonight what you would stir in this room, God, is a forest fire that cannot be contained, God, and it cannot be controlled, but we would be totally, 100% consumed by the fire of God. I pray that the flames would engulf us, God, not to distract us, God, but to encourage us, God, that the the fire is radiating from our lives, God. God, I pray that everything that we would touch from here on out would not look like hell, but it would look like heaven. I pray that every single word that we would speak would not be a word from hell, but it would be a word from heaven. I pray that everything that we hear in our lives would not be things of hell, but that they would be things of heaven. God, I pray that what we experience here on earth would not be things of hell, but it would be things of heaven. God, I don't want to look like hell. God, I don't want to talk like hell. God, I don't want to be like hell. God, I don't want to live like hell, but God, I pray that heaven would touch earth, that heaven would touch my life, that heaven would touch my family, that heaven would touch my finance, that heaven would touch my relationships, that heaven would touch my mind, that heaven would touch my heart. If you gotta go, then go because I'm still going. I got more to rejoice about. So, so tonight we're not having we're not having a formal dismissal because tonight we're just rejoicing. We're just rejoicing. That's what. It, if you came for a feel good message, this is not one. If you came to to feel full by the time you left, then I'm sorry, but tonight is not for you. I'm looking for the people who want to leave this room empty of words, empty of breath, empty of worship, empty of praise, empty of rejoicing. God. Don't let my cup overflow. Tonight, I'm pouring all of it out. God, tonight, I'm pouring every single last drop. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. God, I thank you. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for, for these two beautiful baby girls that you've given me, God. God, who are going to be warriors in the faith, God. Who are going to be preachers, pastors, singers, dancers for you, God. God, I thank you that you are establishing them right now, Lord. God, I thank you that even though they drive me crazy, they don't drive you crazy. God, I thank you for the wisdom that you have downloaded and imparted into my spirit on how to train them up, God, as soldiers ready for battle. God, I pray right now that that same spirit, God, that raised Christ from the dead would overtake them, Lord. God, I pray that at two years old, at four years old, God, that they'd begin to speak in tongues, that they'd begin to lay hands on people, and that they would see people healed. God, I thank you, God, the, for the classrooms that you placed them in, God, who, who, who lack faith, God, who, who don't know you, God. I thank you that you are using my daughter, God, to reach, God, her teachers who, who came to Impact Church and got baptized several months ago. God, I thank you, God, that, that they're already, that, that, that evangelistic spirit, you have placed it inside of them. God, I'm, I'm just rejoiced. I'm just rejoicing about my life. Can you do that for a second? Can you just rejoice about your own life? I don't know what God has done in your life, but he's done more for you than you should be sitting there and being quiet. I'm telling you, he's done more for you than you can just be like giving God a golf clap. He's done more for you than you just sitting there like, oh man, this guy's crazy. I'm telling you, I'm, God has done more. And if you don't want to, then that's fine, but I'm going to do it and I'm going to worship God and I'm going to do it radical because it's the only way that I know how to. God, I thank you for the fires that should have consumed me. God, I thank you for the fires that should have consumed my kids. God, I thank you for my wife, Lord. I thank you, God, that you have, that you have given her the spirit of a lion, God. God, that, that with me she is powerful, but without me she is just as powerful. God, I thank you, God, for what you are developing, God. God, I thank you for the voice that you have given her to speak to this generation, God. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a voice, God, that you specifically designed for this generation, Lord. God, and I thank you for what you are developing in your develop, your shaping or your molding. You're about to send her out, God, to stages and platforms and people, God, that other people don't have the ability to communicate to, Lord. But, but there's a gift. There's a gift on her life. God, I thank you for this team. I thank you for the team that makes a rally operate 
great God. God, I thank you for Nick, God, who is so creative, God, in the creative mind that you've given him, Jesus, God. God, I thank you that, that through his graphics and through his videos, God, people are coming to know Jesus, God. I, I, I cast down, God, anything, God, that, that, is, that is controlling his mind, Lord. And I, I pray that you would renew in him, God, the spirit, God, the spirit of Daniel, God, that can walk into a lion's den and not be afraid of the things that he faced, but it shuts the mouth of the, I thank you for Tyler, God. God, I thank you for the anointing, God, that you placed on his life. God, not just because of his voice, Lord, but because of the spirit, God, the, and then the worship, God, that you have deposited in his life, God. God, 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 I pray right now, God, that songs, God, out of the anointing and the abundance of his heart would just begin to flow, God. God, I pray that the culture of impact worship, God, would begin to shift and the anointing would flow, God, because of what you have departed into his life, God. See, sometimes if you can't rejoice for yourself, you just got to rejoice for somebody else. <laughs> and maybe you ain't got nothing to rejoice about. How about you pick somebody right now to your left or your right, and you just begin to rejoice for them. Come on, you just begin to rejoice for them. You just begin to rejoice. For them. Again, I say rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. God, would this be a place where we learn how to rejoice, God, on rainy days and sunny days, God. I will rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Thank you. You, God. Thank you, God, that you picked me up. You turned me around. You placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior. I thank God. 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 Come on, can we worship together? Maybe it's your first time in a long time, or maybe, I don't know, you've been coming to church, but you just haven't taken it serious because of all of the hell that you've been walking through. This is the most important moment. The jumping, the encouraging words, they're all for nothing if we miss this moment. It's the moment where just like this song says, you can step out of the grave and you can step into an eternity with Jesus. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, I just wanna invite you, the greatest invitation you will ever receive is to say yes to Jesus, to make him the Lord and Savior of your life. God, right now, we come before you today, humble, broken, ready for you to take over, for us to hand off the steering wheel to you and say, God, you direct my life, lead my life, drive my life. You have full control. I don't want to look like hell anymore, God. But would you, just like you showed up in that fire, show up in my heart tonight? If that's you today, you say, God, I want to repent of my sins. I want to go all in with the relationship with you. On a count of three, would you raise your hand? One, two, three, lift your hands. We don't usually do this, but I, I want to count every single hand. So, so, so if, if you could just raise it high so I can count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three. 54 people coming back to Jesus. I'm telling you, somebody better rejoice right now. <laughs> the reason we're shouting is because this is what heaven looks like. The Bible says that right now, the angels are celebrating just one person coming back to Jesus, let alone 50, whatever, coming back to Jesus. If you raise your hand, would you pray this prayer with me? And if you've got a neighbor next to you, pray it loud with them so they feel supported. There's no power in this prayer. It's the transformation of your heart that matters. It's the meaning. 
It's the decision to say, God, I want to go from death to life. Say, dear Jesus, I give you my life. I say yes to you. Forgive me of my sins. Today, I'm ready to put down my hell and step into heaven. Today, I'm ready to look more like you. Change me. Transform me from the inside out. Today, I'm brand new. In Jesus' name. Everybody said. Come on, and everybody said.